Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Sunday, which means two days ago it was time for a new how to bass tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to make a sound in a track I'm working on. Uh, this sound is going to be this sort of audio clip you're seeing here. This is where it's being processed, and then there's a couple of ones that are actually MIDI as well. It'll be pretty clear which one it is when you hear it, and I'm going to play it. So it's pretty loud. I tried to rebalance my levels. I'm pretty sure I got it right, but I'm going to play it, and I'm going to play it in three, two, one. <laughs> And such. Let's listen to what that sounds like by itself. What's this guy? I'm gonna disable the sound the side chaining. Sound chaining, yeah. What? <laughs> All right. So this one's going to be a little bit weird because the, the source sound for this, I actually made using the modular setup, the actual the hardware synths I have in my setup here. And that's what, this is what this giant thing is here. This is a clone of the source file here. This is what this sounds like by itself. Now, that's actually a pretty generic sound, and it wouldn't have been that hard to make that kind of without the analog stuff. It's just that I was trying to do something with the analog stuff, and this is what I got out of it. And then I just sort of aimlessly processed with it until I got what I got over here. It was not even close to sort of what I was trying to do. But then again, things rarely are. Now, I have it in the spectral view because I want to show something that's particularly important. You see how uh, rhythmically almost there's like disruption here, disruption here, disruption here. There's a lot of disruptions. And when I play it, you can kind of hear it sort of lasering down. What's creating this is that I'm I'm FMing a lot of different parameters. Uh, I'm FMing actual FM. I'm also FMing like um, crossfades between different waveforms and wave shaping shapes and levels and folding amounts and filters and all this stuff. But they're all being FM by different uh, oscillators, which means that they're going to get out of phase. And when you get out of phase, you get sort of this kind of behavior. And if it's slow enough, it'll be pretty slow. And if you ever nail the pitch correctly, it won't do that at all. But because they're different oscillators and because they're analog, it's never gonna happen. Anyway, that's important because different parts of the waveform have different <laughs> sort of character qualities to it. Even if the sound itself is still pretty, a bit still steady, steady and generic. So that's the bass sound that was uh, used to then create these things. <laughs> These guys. Now, um, so the overall process, it begins with, um, there's just a the sound there. And then the first level, level of modulation is this, an extremely sharp and high peak, and then an extremely sharp and, well, sharp notch. So the, 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 the kind of the way this is working is that they're both being independently automated. So here's the here's the um, peak and here's the notch, but they're kind of moving together. They're moving around the same basic area. Not always. Sometimes they're apart. Whatever. That's why they're different, you know, modulations so that they can move move independently. And this is really very fascinating because because this huge peak is existing here. When I then crush it with distortion, which is just basic, almost peaking looking distortion, just as if it got turned up and then it's being peaked into the, the zero dB there. It starts to take shape. And then there's this patcher, which is, uh, this actually, this guy's here isn't doing anything, because uh, I'm actually keeping this here to, for uh, latency parity with this, which is just higher frequency distortion. It's later on, later against it, with a really big peak here. So I play it, that's going in there, and then it's going into here, which is distorting it again, and then coming into here, which is EQing it out, because like if I, if I wasn't doing that, it's pretty freaking harsh. And it gets like a couple, like, you know, higher frequency kind of tinge to things. Now, I notice I had it turned down pretty hard, and that's because when I have it all the way up, uh, at the end of the chain, it's really bad. So, like, that's why it's down as far as it is. Because if it were completely off, it would, you would 
tell as well. So like I, I, I found the sweet spot for that when I had the rest of the processing changed. The next thing is pretty predictable. It's Vogadex. I've got um, a mix of the full wet and uh, the... Uh, well, I was say the modulator, but it's, it's own carrier and modulator, so it's self coming in, but on the high pass, so that we're getting still getting a little bit of the extra higher frequency, just kind of outside itself. And no sound goodizer inside the Vocodex. It's just regular uh, levels coming out of that. And then the hollow room to give it space. Kind of like that. And then a lot of compression to bring back all the destroyed frequencies. Most notably on the higher frequencies, you can see it's like slammed pretty hard to uh, bring that back. The lows and the highs aren't pretty much doing anything at all, honestly. Um, I'm sort of shaping as stereo-wise, but other than that, not really that much. The stereo coming completely from Bahala. And then a final EQ to kind of balance it out. And I'm hearing that I'm just... Pretty sure that's right. Let's find out. <laughs> There we go. All right. Now, um, those those are the ones I've been playing so far. Are the audio clip one, but it's also the not audio clip one. This is just this is the um, the sampler channel one, and this is like I put the whole thing in there, I put the crossfades in there, and like that's just playing this. And this actually has an interesting limitation. Uh, I have uh, the mono engaged, and I do that so like every once in a while, some of them will have overlap notes, and that's an important distinction because. When I mentioned when I wanted to show you the thing over here, I got rid of already because it's some smart. But like when I showed you the spectral view of this whole thing, remember how it changes over the course of the sound of the uh, waveform, and that actually has a, a much bigger effect on the on the uh, the resulting sound than I anticipated. So like what should happen is when I just when I just slip around, slip, slip around inside the thing. So this kind of like targeted movement that I'm doing inside the way inside the whole audio file from here is not something that I could be doing with a sample channel uh, the way that I have it set up. So the, the, if I if I, I linger the notes like this, it actually plays longer. Versus if I don't, it'll restart every time, and that means that it'll um, it'll be a different tone because of where it is. And uh, again, I was very surprised about how literally like a, a very large amount of that change is affected by that. Um, I have to imagine it's because just the nature of the phase, the phasing going on by the original sound and whatnot, interacting with the really big um, peak and the, the 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 notch that's being distorted is amplifying the differences in the waveform that's creating the overall result. So now um, I can't really give this to you. I mean, um, I also kind of don't want it because this FLP is like not not done yet, but. Uh, I think it's actually pretty apparent where where you should go if you want to experiment to make a similar sound yourself. So if, I mean, the first thing you got want you want to want to do is try and make a sound that sounds like the beginning of this, which like is pretty basic. Like even without doing even even without using the analog hardware stuff, like a pretty regular like FM and distortion, just some kind of chunky distorted thing. And then the the big important part is what this guy's doing. And like, although I am doing a bunch of stuff in Vocodex, I should probably talk about it. So let's talk about the Vocodex. I missed a part where I was, I was like, oh, just talk about that. And I forgot about everything else. So it's got pretty pretty high bandwidth and pretty high bandwidth multiplying and also low pitch and all that sort of thing. And order four, which I actually kind of don't do a lot. I just, I just, mostly because I forget it's there and I get used to what it sounds like in order two. But in this case, it worked out. And then uh, in the band distribution, I did make this big curve here. Now, what this curve does is it creates this this effect of having. Um, there used to be a way to. Uh, yeah. you, you see here how like there's less bands here than there are up there. So like the lower frequencies have uh, have sort of distance, bigger distance between the bands, and the higher frequencies do not, and that's changed by the band distribution here because if it were linear then the bands would be equal size across the entire spectrum and this causes some interesting differences 
I have also changed the bandwidth itself. I forgot how that was. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm changing how wide the bands are per band, which you can do inside the inside here. Also, the, the pitch tip is doing this kind of thing. You see this a lot, actually, when, when I'm doing this sort of thing. You see, like, how oh, there'll be one that goes up and one that goes down. And this causes a kind of frequency squeeze where, like, these frequencies are coming together this way. And these ones come, are moving up this way. So they kind of, come, they kind of like, coalesce in the middle there. And that causes uh, the, the familiar kind of formancy change. Versus if I just made moves all formants up or down, which sometimes sounds just fine. You can um, be be a bit more subtle and complicated, even with things that may or may not affect such change. You can force it with the modulator pitch shift window here, which uh, basically is this pitch pitch parameter, uh, the pitch parameter uh, per harmonic or per um, band as opposed to the all at once. It's actually it's funny. There's very there's a lot of similarities about like the philosophy behind vocal decks is there are harmer because the band can kind of be considered harmonics and then you're changing it all on a per harmonic basis this is kind of like an additive voc uh, vocoder well if you think about it all vocoders do that it's just that most vocoders don't give you this kind of control and then you know reverb compression, compression and then eqing and then a lot of side chaining <laughs> So like, let's talk about the automation while we're here. This guy is the uh, the peak, and this guy is the notch. So, like, w how I determine the sound that I want out of this is basically I just move these around until they sound right. These are unique, right? You know, their own thing. Like, I had no idea that was gonna sound like that. Like, I don't. Um, I really just move them around, and and then like. I guess each other and around and through and that kind of thing until I find out what's going on and the, or in some way that I like and then that ends up being the sound which if you're sort of new to this sort of production and you're assuming that most high level producers sort of plan everything they do and you're, and you're thinking to yourself I do that all the time I just experiment randomly and like but I, I came here to learn about specific things to do so that I can always be in control almost no one is ever in control to the point where like I could have planned to make that sound because I thought about it in my head I knew that I was going to do that um uh, you can kind of see that uh, this action. That action, these these are similar enough positions. That they sound, this should sound similar, but it's probably just the change in this guy's audio file. So that's a lot of fun. If you want to get literal with the. Um, the analog stuff. I'm using modular gear, and while um, these the precise methods by which I went to accomplish this the sound are difficult to replicate digitally, the closest you're going to get easily is Reactor Six blocks because you can you can do more or less the same stuff, or you can filter FM and FM other parameters and other other strange stuff, and do that do that kind of thing. Um, but like I did stuff in the modular gear where. Uh, the in the one synth unit has a lot of internal parameters and a lot of those got FM'd and then there was a filter that got FM'd and then I went into a wave shaper and like the wave shaper levels got FM'd and like that's like that's why you know it's just just sort of sort of being in the way it is. Um But uh just to give you some insight. This this is a really strange habit base because this is this is one one of the ones where I like not everything I did is exactly perfectly possible for everyone else to do. But I hope the concepts are clear enough that you can kind of figure out how to do it on your own. Because, um, honestly, this is all... This is a big a big in part of the post-processing that causes it to be, to be what it is. But it also still mattered sort of what was going on um, in the source in a way that I was not expecting. It was very interesting. Um, I am going to experiment more in the future with like the really sharp peaks and like the notches against each other because it's really kind of obvious. Like it's not something I've ever tried before, and it's an interaction with distortion that I I still am just not the most familiar with. When a lot of people already have like figured out that kind of sound and like moved on because that's like the first thing they did. I sort of skipped it. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.